Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word. I'm Barry Bryson. We're continuing our study of the Gospel of Matthew. We're in Matthew chapter 26, and today we're going to be reading verses 14 through 16. And this is um, an opportunity, or excuse me, um, this is the the um, betrayal of Judas and his looking for an opportunity to turn Jesus over to uh, the high priests. They need to take him by stealth. We've already talked about that a couple of uh, days ago. They need to take him by stealth because he still has the favor of the people. And they need an insider to accomplish this. And one presents himself to them today. So let's read verses 14 through 16. Then one of the twelve, named Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me to deliver him up to you? And they weighed out to him thirty pieces of silver. And from then on, he began looking for a good opportunity to betray him. There's so much here. Um, J Judas is not named here, and he's not named in any of the other accounts. He's named in John's Gospel um, as the one who um, 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 objected um, last time we were together. Uh, of course, they all identify Judas as the one who betrays, but makes me wonder, was this the last straw um, when Jesus called him out and praised Mary of Bethany? Um, was this in some way the last straw? Why did Judas betray Jesus? John is the only one who tells us that he was pulling money out of the treasury because he was the one who carried the bag of money. And he wants to know who, how much they're going to pay him. And so maybe, maybe the lure of ill-gotten gain um, proved a great, great temptation to him. Um, maybe, maybe he's disappointed in Jesus. Maybe his feelings are hurt. The thing is, we don't know. We're not told. We can only speculate. And, and we, we talked about who Judas even is. Is he a man of Kerioth, which would make him a Judean, not a Galilean? Does he feel like an outsider? Or is he a man, a Sicari, a man of the Sicari, a dagger man, one of the assassins, the, um, the, 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 the military wing of the zealots? Um, and he, he's understanding that Jesus is not going to be the Messiah. He expected him to be. We're just not told. But there are many reasons to contemplate, and I think contemplating them is good for us, is good for us to do as a good exercise because, because it teaches us not to be disappointed when Jesus doesn't do things exactly the way we want him to because we all bring our expectations, many of them unrealistic, to the gospel, to God, to Jesus as our Savior. He is who he is, and who he is is perfect. He's perfect before God and he's perfect as our savior. He is exactly the savior we need. And so whatever it is he does or says, it's the right thing, whether we understand that or not. And in this moment, Judas doesn't understand it at all. 30 pieces of silver was the traditional price of a slave, the price of a human life. It's also the exact amount that is mentioned in, in the prophet Zechariah, in Zechariah chapter 11, verse 12. Zechariah, such a difficult read, and yet so many exact, um, just um, uh, precise and detailed uh, prophecies about the coming Messiah, and this is, this is one of them. So I call your attention to that passage. And so he, he, uh, they weigh him out the money, uh, there were coins, 30 pieces, but of course money in that ancient time had to be weighed out to know that you had the exact amount because money was still more about the weight than about the number of coins. And so they weigh it out to him, 30 pieces of silver, and he begins looking for an opportunity and one will present itself in the next day or so. And we'll talk about how that happens in the coming days together. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.